Hello there, it's Simone. This is going to be my Inky Fountain Pen 2022 Roundup. I just thought I wanted to reflect on how my year, my hobby of using and co collecting and just, you know, exploring fountain pens and inks has evolved over this past year. I started really slow in the beginning of um, the year and I it has exploded into something that I didn't even think I was digging into when 2022 started. And instead of tacking it onto a currently inked video or something like that, I decided to make its own video just um, talking about the pens that I have acquired in 2022, the inks that I have acquired, wh what I did with those pens and what I'm using them for, uh, just so that you can get an idea on why I'm this nerdy and why I, I have so many pens in front of me right now. I sorted them into three categories. So the first I wanted to do is kind of stats. So I counted them and it's not really very, um, it's not a good number when you think that each one of those numbers it's attached to a dollar amount. I purchased 18 new pens in 2022 and I'm actually a bit shocked. I wish it was a little bit less. I'm excited about all of them. There is no question about that. Oh, that's not true. I actually purchased 19 pens. I just sold one again. Okay, let me correct that number. Plus one, minus one. Um, that's basically one and a half pens every month, which I'm trying to get down to one pen every two months in 2023. Let's see how that works. Um, these are all the pens that are between zero and uh, let's say $35. So that includes the Twisbees. They were, I think, $32.99 or something. These are all very, aff very affordable pens. So I got seven of those. Then I got four of the mid-range fountain pens. These are between 50 and 100, I would say. And then these are the... Um, all of those are normally... This one is the most expensive one. I think this is 220 regular price. I did not pay full price for these three but I did for these two um, however they are still all above a hundred dollars pens uh, three of the pens that I purchased were gold nipped fountain pens um, and then I actually was able to receive two fountain pens from uh Fountain friends, fountain pens from friends in the fountain pen community. Uh, they have been watching my videos and reached out to me. Um, this one is a Kaweco Double Broad. Um, the previous owner did not necessarily care for those for the the nib and decided to send it to me so that I could try it out myself. And this one is a Twisby with eco with a 1.1 stub same thing the previous owner didn't necessarily care for the stub nib and heard me mention in one of my videos that i would love to also have a 1.1 stub nib from twisby in my collection so I, that i would be able to compare the uh, cursive mm, calligraphy medium nib from pilot and the lamy 1.1 stub with like all three of those in my collection so I could compare and see how differently they all write. Um, so she also reached out to me and said that she was going to send that to me. So I'm really grateful for it's 
super nice to have people gift things to me, be benefactors. And uh, yeah, I really, really appre appreciate the sentiment. So these I did not pay for, but they also entered my collection. I'm not really sure if I received this at the end of 2021 or at the beginning of 2022, but I'm just going to count it in because it doesn't really take away from the fact that I seem to have a problem without knowing that I have a problem. Well, I knew it. That's why I'm trying to step on the brakes and slow down a bit. I think when you start exploring a new hobby like fountain pens, then of course you acquire a bit more in the beginning until you figure out what you like, what you don't like. None of these are exactly the same. There's always a subtle difference in each one of them and that's what makes them so fascinating for me and that's why I wanted to have all of those. Um, I'm going to show you quickly which in which order I purchased them. So I'm going to put these aside and not include them in my further, further um, investigation. But these also entered my collection at some point in this past year. So the first pen that I purchased was this Kawiko Sport. I declared it my uh, birthday pen. I purchased it with a fine nib. And from the beginning, I wasn't really excited. There is no nib on here, but... That was the original nib that was on there. Um, I wasn't really ha excited about the... It looks like a dusty orange. And I wish it was more brilliant like that. Maybe more like this orange. I, Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't love at first sight. And I have since decided that I will part with this. If you're interested in this Kawiko sport, then please reach out to me. It comes with a f fine nib and I'll ha happily pass it along to you. Um, the second pen that I purchased in these two pens I purchased in March, I thought I needed the iridescent pearl Kawiko because it was so hyped. I don't know. But again, Kawiko's pens are not really the ones that I'm drawn to. I am more drawn to the Twisby Egos. And so I have also decided to part with this one. This one I purchased with a medium nib. Uh, this was the, the March purchase pen, the original plan. This was a Franklin Christoph um, Model 45. Um, I purchased it with a SIG, that's their in-house specialty grind. It's a stub italic gradient nib. Um, and I did not like it in the beginning. I definitely put in the wrong ink, but um, I was able to, it. this pen was able to redeem itself. I had Audrey, the Franklin Christoph in-house nibmeister, work on this pen during the San Francisco Pen Show, and she was able to make it write so much wetter and smoother. And I really love it now. And I also have used it with a very wet ink that was uh, recommended to me. And both of those things have helped make this pen a favorite writer for me. The next pen that I got, so as you can see, this is February, March. I did not purchase a pen in April. I purchased one pen in May, which was this one. This is a secondhand pen. This is the Twisby um, Mini Rose Gold. Um, and this one again, really nice, lovely writer. Love having this pen, add, having added this pen to my collection. And then I purchased a pen at the um, Independence Day sale with Endless Pens. That was the Opus 88 Mini Pocket Pen or something like that in purple. And I sold that already. That pen did not work for me whatsoever. I This one worked for me after it was worked on. And so I was able to keep it, uh, but that pen, the form, the shape of the pen just doesn't feel comfortable to my hands. And so I decided instead of 
having it live in my pen case for the rest of its life, it deserves a better home where it will be used more. Um, I think the next pen that I got was, or the next pens I, this is my San Francisco Pen Show haul. I purchased all these at the San Francisco Pen Show. I got this at the Franklin Kristoff table and I learned which, you know, that's one of those things that you, when you start digging into a hobby, you learn as you go. Oh, wow, they have number six nibs. This is a number five nib. There's a huge difference between these two nibs. And I, I learned really quickly that I, I really like the way it feels, the, my writing feels, or the way my hand is away from the paper with a number six nib compared to a number five or even number four nib. I just recently learned that these nibs, I used to call them number five, but in fact, these are number four nibs. So there is one size in between this size and to stay in um, Twisby terms, this is the Twisby number six nib. So this is the Twisby number six. This is the Twisby number five nib, number four nib, the Twisby Diamond 580 pen has a number five nib that goes in between these two. That's something that I didn't know until just recently. And that's something that fascinates me to so much like the different nib sizes, how my writing changes, how it feels. And so that's a reason why I purchased then another pen that you will see. So these were San Francisco Pen Show. Then in August, I saw Karina Loves to Plan use a calligraphy medium nib on a Metropolitan. So I threw that in my card when I did a purchase at Jet, pen Jet Pens. Then I, um, so this one is already spoken for. Let me see how this works out now. Then this one um, I had to get because this is one of my favorite colors. This is probably my favorite color Twisby to date. Um, I purchased through Pen Realm, so I had a specialty grind put on here. This is a rever reverse architect nib. So I did not just purchase another Twisby Eco. I purchased a Twisby Eco with a custom ground nib. This is my first. Well, this you could probably say it's a custom ground nib as well. But this one, you, you get just, they just grind it in house and put it on here. This one, I sent photos of the way I hold my pen. And then this one's was specially ground for the way I hold my my pen. So this one is a actually made for me grind. Um, so that's that was next. Then the purple glow was announced. Wow. Well, don't I have enough pens already, Twisbees? I I said that I wanted to have a full collection of nibs sizes avail available to me in the 2SB Eco. I wanted extra fine all the way to 1.1 stop. And with this pen that came after this pen, I was able to fill that void. But I'm not sure, to be really honest, that I, if they come out with another amazing color like this one, that I would be able to stop or not buy that pen. And the the bad thing about these pens is that they are only thirty three dollars. So it's it's like, you know, that's in your budget most of the time, or in my budget it is, and so I can usually justify it if I allocate the money from my budget, but then again, why would I need all of those? So this, I then decided to get in an extra fine. I love that it is purple when it's light and then it turns into this really 
soft blue color when it um, glows in the dark. And then I'm not so sure how, I think this is how this works. Then I saw a video by Gourmet Pens talking about the um, Jin Hao X159. This one has a number eight nib. I was like, wow, I love the number six nibs. Or I just recently figured out I love the number six nibs. I really want uh, to try this. This was $12.50 on Amazon. And of course I bought it because why not? So I did. Uh, so this entered my collection and I, it is a really lovely writer. This is so huge. Look at how different these look. Uh, let's put it next to a Twisby Eco that's more a normal standard size pen. And it really writes nicely. I, it, I thought I would probably feel really awkward with the size of the pen. That is absolutely not the case. So this one also was a very surprise. Then I saw Lisa Pearson show a three platinum 3776 and she talked about how the price on Amazon was so good. Um, I purchased this for, I think it was 86. I had a coupon that was would take $20 off because I had a gift card. So I, I purchased this for 60. And so I just did it. Uh, I was super afraid of, of this nib because I have heard that it was the stiffest of all the beginner entry-level gold nib pens. This is one of my favorite pens that I have used since I got it. Then during Fountain Pen Day, I purchased this one. The reason why I purchased this one was because it also has a number six nib. And I said before that I noticed how I like the number six nibs. So I want to explore that more. So I got this one. This is a Narwhal Original Plus. Plus, This is a vacuum filler fountain pen. And then I had been planning. That was the only planned purchase. Like these weren't planned at all. <laughs> Those. Um, this was the purchase that I was looking for towards in um, during for Black Friday, because in recent years, Endless Pens had has had this pen for a, under just under a hundred dollars uh, during their Black Friday sale. So I was uh, say or waiting for that deal. They didn't have that deal, uh, but I had already purchased one of their gift cards. Um, so I just went ahead and bit the bullet and bought it for a bit more bit huh, 50 more it's still not full price and i had originally decided not to buy this because of the shape and i was afraid i wouldn't like it um i can just say that i really love it so far i have only inked this with one, with one color yet so i need to explore this more um but yeah, those two pens I was so afraid of, and those turned out to be lovely writers, really great pens. So, wow. Then I, on a whim, last week, I ordered these two. This one is a Twisby Go. I haven't even opened this yet. Uh, I did. I, I looked at it, but I haven't used it yet. I haven't tested it yet. I think I dipped it in, a, in ink. Did I? Not even sure. This is a Twisby Go. I just want to... I have heard so many people say that these are amazing for shimmer inks. Uh, so I I brought, bought one uh, on JetPens just to test it out. I know I like the nibs. I, I am intrigued by the filling mechanism. So I'm, I'm really curious to get to use this one. And then because I started using my fountain pen filled with carbon black ink in my weekly journal. I've been doing that since wow, a while now. Um, I decided I'm going to um, get a dedicated pen. I want the brown pen loop from Traveler's Company here and I'm getting a dedicated pen. I really, I use, usually use a Twisby, not this one, but a Twisby. Um, 
with carbon black ink but when i am journaling and i often write on the couch or use it on the couch and i i write i put away the cap somewhere i don't post twisty egos then i end up searching for the cap i always lo lose the cap so i i was i i was really intrigued by this uh, brass pen from Traveler's Company. Um, it has a super thin section, very short. I, I'm holding it right here. I've just been using it like three times maybe yet. So there needs to be a video is coming for sure. And I'm going to tell you all about how I like and not like this pen. But I feel like having the cap be part of the pen uh, prevents me from losing it all the time. So that's where this is going to live. This is going to be permanently inked with carbon black and just be here. So that's all about the inks, uh, the pens that I purchased. I will be fil filming a video on this one and on this one. I'm thinking of maybe filming comparison videos now that I have pens. Um, that are comparable um, and I am really happy about all of those pens but I also see that I need to slow down and that I need to explore these the pens that I currently have more I you know I can say that I like this pen with this ink but in order to to get a better grasp on this pen I need to use it more I need to use it with various different inks in there just to see how I like its overall performance and that's true for many of these pens um, and I'm really looking forward to doing that in 2023 uh, if you know how I usually use my pens I fill up about nine to ten pens each ink rotation that's about every month uh, some most of them are inked for about two months until I unink them so if I start I have some that work well some that don't so maybe four will move on to the next month and then I add five and so I always have about nine but not nine same if that makes sense. So that's how I'm going to dig a bit deeper. That's how I'm going to explore all of those pens in 2023 because 2022 is already over and I haven't, I have barely used many of these pens more than twice. And so I just, I realize that I'm right now, I'm at a point where I need to step back a bit from the purchasing. I need to focus on what I have here and i'm i'm really excited about that and i'm really looking forward to that and i hope that i will be able to um not always fall into that fomo trap if that makes sense let me put those pens aside really quickly and talk about inks um <laughs> I have a video on my channel where I say that I want to focus purchasing only ink samples. Well, I purchased 12 ink bottles in 2022. I think that's okay. They're all different sizes. I purchased them for various different reasons. I would probably not buy all of them again. This is the first set of inks that I purchased ever in bottles. It was the most expensive, most money I spent on ink ever. <laughs> and this is a purchase that I probably shouldn't have made. This one is a special ink that I purchased through Ink Mike from Ink Dependence. It's a teal ink with blue pigment similar to shimmer ink but the shimmer is not shimmer but blue pigment and I was really really curious about the way that worked so I decided to go ahead and purchase this ink bottle there was no ink samples available for this one either but this one is so specific and so special that it makes more sense to get this bottle than these there's always a 
similar shade from a different maker or even the same maker for these inks that I have ha, could have purchased a, a sample of instead of going for the whole bottles. That was definitely due to the hype, due to the exclusivity that I decided that I needed this. I probably didn't. No, I know that I didn't, but it's okay. I'm just going to send samples to everyone that wants them. Then I was recommended this ink. I purchased this at the San Francisco Pen Show. This is Rider's Blood. I did not buy a sample of this first, mainly because I trusted the person who recommended the ink and I was not disappointed. Also, uh, compared to many other ink makers, Diamine inks are fairly affordable. So even a 50 or what is this? 80 milliliter bottle is probably 15 bucks which is way less than one of those bottles costs. Um, so this is like diamine ink bottles. I'm more likely to purchase one if a sample is not available than with other inks. But yeah, I really enjoy this ink. This is going to be my, I am using this ink to test because I know that this is a very wet ink. Uh, to test why a pen may might write weird. Um, so I'm every time I am experiencing weird behavior from a pen, I'll use this ink just to figure out what is wrong. Is it the ink? Is it the pen? What do I need to do to the pen? What does somebody else need to do to the pen? Is this pen the right pen for me? Uh, I will find out with this ink. That's why this purchase is definitely justified and I really also like the ink color, which is cool. Uh, this one I had a sample of and I really, really like the color. So I decided to go ahead and get this bottle. This one I probably wouldn't purchase again, just because I I really enjoy exploring many different inks, many different makers. That's part of the fun. And so, yeah, there's probably more of these colors or this specific color, maybe not the specific, specific color, but a very, very similar color um, that I could use instead as a sample. And so I'm, I probably, I was just carried away when I purchased these. So these three I purchased at the same time. Um, after the San Francisco Pen Show. This one is Diamine Oxblood. This was also recommended to me. I probably shouldn't have bought this. Maybe they were out of the sample and that's why I got the bottle. Again, this was maybe seven bucks. And so, yeah, okay, even though it's not my favorite, I'm going to give it another try in a different pen. And if it's not for me, then I'll just pass along the bottle. And that's okay, because it's not like I spent 28. Some of these Robert Oster Shimmer inks are like $28. So, yes, there's a different amount, 50 milliliters compared to 30 milliliters. But still, like, yeah, you you get what I mean. This one was recommended to me by Miss Marilyn Darling, and the only size they had available was the, was 80 milliliters. I don't know what got into me, but this is probably the best ink purchase that I have made. This color is exactly the color that I love. I This is how it looks like on Stalogy paper. It's it's actually it's even better in real in real life. It's more pink than it looks on camera right now. Um, it's it's amazing. I yeah, and I also want to share samples of this ink with my friends because I'm just so in love with it. And then I purchased this ink. This is platinum carbon black. This is what I want to use for sketching for. My writing journal, I also use this in uh, a Hobonichi um, Cousin Day Free uh, because it dries really fast and it's waterproof and so I can use it for so many things. Um, 
yeah, so that's all the inks that I purchased. I'm okay with having these, but I definitely don't want to buy any bottles in 2023. Let's see how that is going to work. So now um, I filled three journals with my long form writing and fountain pens. That's really exciting. I didn't think I would be able to do that. So this is what I started out with. I started this in November of 2021. I finished it in May 20, uh, in May of 22. Then this one I used from May to July to the end of July. And then this is, I, it doesn't say yet, but this is what I started on August 2nd and what I'm going to use until December 31st. It's almost the end of the year. There's like four pages left and I'm going to stop on December 31st and I'm going to start a new journal on January 1st. I wouldn't do this if I was only halfway through, but since I'm already at the end in the last pages, that's how, how this is going to work out, which I'm really excited about. So I'm, I'm very happy to have filled these with my fountain pens and my writing. So let me, let me tell you a little bit about the findings that I had about inks, about the, um, the colors that I like. I'm really, I really like bold colors. I like when they're easily legible. This counts as a bold color. I really like jewel tones. I really love colors that are shading, like these two and this one as well. I am okay with chromo shading inks, but I'm not in love with them, which is very surprising. I love how they look on swatches on the Tomoe River paper for sure. And it's always so much fun to see how the different, um, how, how they separate. But when they are in my pens, I'm not really excited about them. Shimmer inks are okay. I'm, for instance, this one is a shimmer ink that I, this is this one. I have a full bottle of this. This one, I had it in a pen once and it did not work out in that pen at all. It's also a very uh, sheening ink too. So that's not really exciting for me. This one, however, is really cool. I really like this ink. It's, um, it has a subtle um, shimmer that is not too overpowering. When I wrote with this in the beginning, it was just shimmer all the way through. And that's just not something that I, I like. Same with sheen. I'm okay with a little sheen on the edges of the writing, but if the sheening is overpowering and I can't even see the base color, then that ink is not an ink for me. I do have a love-hate relationship with light colors. Um, I don't know if that's because I put them in the wrong pens. For instance, somewhere here is... Um, this one, for instance, did not work for me at all. This is not shading. This is super light. It just blurs into one color blotch. I can't even uh, identify the letters here. Um, Somewhere here, I have Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. I really love this color. I want it to work so badly. The only pen I have been able to make it work so far for me is this uh, double broad Kaweko, which is less broad than my broad Twisby. Uh, but I had this in my Twisby and it just would not really work for me. And I just don't know why. So that's something to explore. Um, and that's, that's all about the inks. Now, let me talk about the pens. I'm going to bring them back out and just talk a little bit. So I found, I purchased this at the San Francisco Pen Show. This is a broad nib. Maybe it's on the, wow, this one looks like it's even not really, maybe I need to look at this nib from, from, with a loop maybe this nib is on the upper edge of b2 
being acceptable as a broad nib, but I haven't really enjoyed any of the inks. I inked it twice. I inked it with the Robert Oster Coffee Date, and I also inked it with um, the Sailor Shikiyori Sakura. Both weren't really fa favorites of mine. I feel like my handwriting is super bold. The lines aren't big enough for, for the broad nibs, and it wasn't really enjoyable. So I thought I liked broad nibs, but turns out I just like this one. I don't necessarily care for this one. I, I'm going to try and see uh, some more. Again, 2023 is a year of exploration. See, maybe I need to put a bolder color in, in this pen. I have only used it with light colors. Maybe that's not the right colors for this. But I have what I'm learning right now because this one is an extra fine nib. This is very wet. This one is a fine nib. This is also wet. This one is an extra fine nib. The ink is also very wet. And I originally I thought I was more of a medium nib to broad. I really enjoy the stub nibs as well. But I'm I'm leaning towards maybe what I really like is when the pen is very wet. When the pen is a very wet writer because I really like all three of those. And they're all not medium nibs. They're not broad, they're not medium, they're they're fine extra fine nibs, which was something that I I haven't really enjoyed in the past two years. So I'm I'm really curious to where this these all of these findings that I'm having throughout the year will lead to. I was extremely afraid, as I mentioned before, of this pen. Um, I'm glad I got it at such a good price, so I dared to try it. I would probably buy just a fine and a broad nibbed Platinum 3776 just so that I can try how they feel because this is such an amazing writing experience for me. I was so hesitant because I really love the buttery smooth uh, writing experience that I get from the Custom 74. And this is not that, but it's still an amazing writing experience. And I thought, well, if I like this, maybe I don't like, won't like that. But that's absolutely not true. I was super afraid of the shape of this. I don't have any problems with the shape of this as well. So these are some surprises that I'm, I'm just learning about myself, about my preference while I'm going. So I really like to experiment with these stubby nibs with the sig nibs the 1.1 stub i do have a 1.1 stub from lamy this one is a calligraphy medium i feel like this is i don't i haven't really consciously written with a cursive or italic nib is there even a difference? See, see, I need to investigate more. But I feel like when I write with this compared to the 1.1 stub nibs that it's a, there's a slight difference in the nib. Maybe it has some, maybe the edges aren't as round. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just the nib. I don't know yet. Um, but I enjoy writing with them. I, I have to really concentrate and want to write with those to make my penmanship look nice, but what I'm currently still feel most at home is definitely the round regular nibs that you can find in basically on any pen. Um, I do love the feel of the gold nibs, but again, if I'm completely honest, I don't necessarily notice a difference. I enjoy writing with this pen just as much as I enjoy writing with these pens. So definitely I'm still not able to say with blindfolded with my eyes closed and not knowing what pen I have in my hand is this a gold nib just from the writing experience or the way the the pen glides over the paper. Um, I'm not saying that I'm not enjoying these pens I just cannot tell the difference and 
I don't really know if I need to be able to do that. But that's just some findings. And then I, I just... I really, really love my Twisby Ecos. So I, I just... They work. Most of the inks that I try work in these pens. They don't complain about anything that I put into them. They deal with everything. Uh, they're really well maintainable. Some of my pens started to crack right here. I'm trying not to remove the nibs and feeds as much as I used to. Um, but I, I feel like if that's what, what is happening to them, then I will reach out to Twisby in due time and see what they can do for me. Um, but I'm not too worried to not purchase any more. Um, yeah. If there is going to be an, an amazing color, I, I love Twisby's so much that I'm probably not, not going to buy it. And then, as I said, I started to use my fountain pens in my weekly journal, which was not the case in the beginning of the year. So that has changed, and I'm really excited about this change. It feels very natural. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is my, my journals that I do the nerdy stuff in. I have been documenting my currently inked since April 28th, 2021, very infrequently. But since the beginning of the year, let me see, I have made a currently inked almost every month. Um, towards the end of the year, every month. It's not the beginning of every month, but once a month, I am re- vamping my ink rotation I'm, I'm revamping the color palette and I'm taking some of the pens out and adding some of the pens in I really love doing that I love thinking about what colors do I want to add what which pens do I want to have in them that just brings me so much joy it's probably similar to other people coloring in a coloring book or meditating I just really geek out over this and it brings me joy it brings me peace so I'm doing it until it doesn't serve me anymore I really love or I started in July June May at the end of May I started to inspired by Chris Sainz I started to write down next to my currently inks I started to write down I started writing down just a tiny snippet and this is absolutely very subjective it ch probably even changes from month to month i don't have a a a guideline on what a double plus or a single plus means it just helps me um remember how i specifically liked each of these pen and ink parent pairings so i started in may to write down tiny snippets right here regarding each of these pen combinations uh, after I'm done with this rotation and I really enjoy doing that. First of all, it fills up my journal more and second of all, it, it really helps me remember w what was wrong or worked, didn't work with this specific combination. I also started doing or keeping an ink log now i can't find it anymore because this is also scrambled here uh, i i repurposed this nolte efficiency and every time i journaled uh, on the date that i did i wrote which pen i used and what color was in there what ink was in there and then on the right side i wrote what i um thought about this and it worked out so well and I enjoyed it so much that I decided to keep on going with this in 2023. Um, but instead of using this 
with the proprietary Nolte paper, I think it's proprietary, I decided to move into a Hobonichi Weeks, which has Tomoe River paper, which is my preferred long form journaling paper. So I have the same, very, very similar writing experience on this and uh, in the journal that I'm using for journaling, which I really like. Uh, so that's what I have been doing or using since this um, log started. I have some notes pages in the back that I will be uh, talking about in a future video where I'm going to show you exactly how I'm using this. But I think I'm at the end. I don't really care how long this video is. I just wanted to nerd out about fountain pens a bit more, talk to people who understand what I'm talking about, and I hope you enjoyed. Um, let me know what your 2022 fountain pen stats are. Um, I hope I'm not the only one who went a bit overboard with purchasing ink uh, pens. I don't feel like I went overboard with purchasing inks. I did definitely go a bit crazy with my pens. I'm going to rein that in in 2023. I... What did you learn about yourself? What are your preferences? Have they changed? I'd really love to know all the things. Leave them in the comments below and I'm sure to answer. Maybe not today, but sometime in the near future. Um, yeah, uh, on to 2023, on to new fountain pens, on to me ogling all the fountain pens and not buying them. Um, I will see you soon. Until then, bye.